Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these double-sided herringbone wirework chain links. So we're going to be creating these decorative links that have the herringbone effect on both sides so it doesn't matter if your jewelry flips around while you're wearing it. And you can of course turn these links into a chain or even use them individually. Now if you like my tutorials please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And there is also a super thanks button below the video if you want to support me that way so I can continue making more tutorials for you in the future. Otherwise if you want to learn how you can make this chain then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now the wire I'm using is a regular round copper wire and the first gauge here is a 0.8 mil and then I'm using a 0.5 mil and this is going to be for the herringbone effect. Now of course we also need our beads so I'm using some six millimeter rounds and the specific ones I'm using are some faceted purple coated hematite gemstone beads but of course you can use whatever you like just make sure the holes are large enough to take the 0.8 mil wire through. Now this is just what I'm going to be demonstrating with. You can also change out your materials with say four millimeter rounds and then 0.4 millimeter wire for the herringbone effect. That will then get you smaller sized and more delicate links but of course that's completely personal preference. We then just need a few tools as well so I've got some flush cutters here so we can cut our wire, tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire and then I'm using these six step bell making pliers for the loops that we need to make. You can also use round nose pliers that's completely up to you. Now the material list and useful links will be in the description box below the video otherwise let's get it all ready and let's get started. So we then need to cut some lengths of our wire and have a length here of a 0.8 mil. How long you want this to be is really up to you and what you're comfortable working with. I usually like about 40 centimeters or so. That will give me enough to make multiple lengths with. But if you prefer to work with a shorter length, of course you can do that. Now I'm working with a shorter length here just for the purpose of the video. And then I've got two lengths of the 0.5 mil wire here of about 20 centimeters each. And these are for one length. So I'm going to start out grabbing the 0.8mm length of wire and first thing I want to do is create a wrapped loop on one end. So about 5cm in from the end or so I'm going to take my pliers and put them on the wire and just create about a 90 degree bend like that. Then I'm taking my 6 step bell making pliers or round nose pliers if that's what you're using. Put them on that bend and then just bring that little short end all the way around to create a full circle like that and then I'm going to grab my pliers again and then I'm going to grab my tweezers and pliers again place them onto the circle so it holds a shape while I then take the rest of this little tail and wrap it around below the circle just once or twice like that and then we need to cut off the excess so flip it around and cut it off like that and then we always want to make sure that we just squeeze that little end of the wire that you can feel with your fingers in so it's not sticking out and there we have one wrap loop in place now from here we then need to grab one length of the 0.5 mil wire at a time now I'm holding the 0.8 mil wire so the loop is facing towards me then I'm taking the 0.5 mil and laying it on top and just put a short little tail over it and then bring that tail all the way around so I'm basically just wrapping it around the 0.8 mil and I'm going to wrap it around so it comes back out towards the longer length there and then I'm just going to grab my flush cutters cut off the excess and again I'm just going to make sure to squeeze in that little end of wire so that is one length attached then I'm going to grab a bead add that onto the end of the 0.8 mil and just let that come all the way down then I'm going to flip this around so I'm pointing the other end towards me and the loop is now facing away from me and keep hold of that and then grab the other length of 0.5 mil and then below the bead here so you can just push it up a little bit I'm going to repeat the same thing with this length so I'm just going to place the short tail over the top of the 0.8 mil and then wrap that around so we attach this and again just have this come out towards the same side where the long end is coming out cut off the excess and then just make sure to squeeze down that end and then we have all our wires attached here now we need to start making the herringbone effect so it doesn't really matter where you start but I'm just going to start on the bottom here and you want to make sure you start on where the length of wire is coming out over the top of the wire we then need to make sure that these two lengths of the 0.5 mil wire and the bead are sandwiched nice and close together they don't have to be pushed down to the wrap loop yet I like to do this a bit further up the wire so we have a bit more working space but then I'm going to take the bottom length of 0.5 mil here and I like to just hold on to everything with my fingers so I put my thumb on the bead and then I bring this length around the side of the bead towards the top of the bead there 
and over the top of the 0.8 mil to come back around underneath. So I basically made the 0.5 mil go around the side of the bead and then wrapping around the 0.8 mil on the top side of the bead there and have it come out towards the opposite side. So I've done a full wrap with it. And then from there, I'm gonna flip my piece so my loop is now facing away from me. And I'm gonna repeat the exact same thing with the other length here. And this is now also coming out on top. So I'm gonna bring this around the side of the bead and then over the top of the 0.8 mil and then do a full wrap so it comes out towards the opposite side and in the same direction now as the other one. And what you're going to be able to see is we now have two lengths of wire here around this side of the bead. And then I'm just going to flip it. So the other length of wire down here is again laying over the top of the 0.8 mil. And we then need to repeat the same so we get the same two lengths of wire around the other side of the bead. So I'm just going to bring this around the side over the top of the 0.8 mil. And then wrap it around one full time to come out on the opposite direction there. You can see we then have a wrap on the other side as well. Then flip your piece so the loop is coming down towards me and the other length of 0.5 mil is coming over the top of the 0.8 mil there. Bring it around the side of the bead over the top of the 0.8 mil and then make a full wrap. So this now comes out towards the same side as the other one. And we've now again got two lengths of wire on the other side of the bead. And you then want to flip it around again. We're basically going to keep repeating this now. So this length of wire needs to come up towards the other side and I'm bringing it around the side of the bead and now making sure it comes underneath the first length that was already there. And then do the full wrap, come out towards the opposite side and then we can flip it, use the other length of wire and do the same thing. Make sure to bring it around the side but it comes underneath the previous wrap there and bring it out towards the opposite side. And then we can see on this side now we have four lengths of wire and they're getting closer to meeting up. Now flip your piece so we can do the same thing on the other side instead of having just the two lengths we need the four. So I bring this length of wire around the side. Make sure I go underneath the previous length. So basically in between the two lengths that are already there. Bring it out to the other side. Flip your piece and again bring this underneath the previous length. Do your wrap and bring out to the other side. So you can kind of say the wires are constantly chasing each other in a way. And you can start to see we're getting the herringbone effect already. But I want to do one more round. So grab your length of wire. Bring it between all the wires on the side. So now on this side here I'm getting three lengths with this wrap. Bring it to the other side. Flip your piece and use this length to get the third wrap on that side as well. So we now have six lengths in total on that side and then we just got to repeat the same with the other side. So take one at a time, bring it in between right in the middle of the other lengths as you're bringing it around the side of the bead and then do your wrap. And because this is going to be my final one I like to just bring it around an extra time before I then take the remaining wire and bring that between the other wires on the side. Make sure to come underneath the two that belongs to that side already. And then do your wrap. And this time, like I said, just do a bit of an extra wrap since we have made now the complete herringbone effect. And then we can go in and cut off the excess. And I just wanted to do that bit extra wrap just to make it more secure. So cut it off and always just make sure to just squeeze down the end and of course repeat the same with the other one as well and squeeze that down. And then you can see obviously it's floating a bit too high up so all I'm gonna do is push it down the wire to sit right next to the wrap loop that we made in the beginning. And then to finish off this link, all we need to do is make a wrap loop on the other side of the herringbone. Now what I like to do is make sure my wrap loops are gonna be facing opposite directions since I'm going to be turning it into a chain, I find that that ends up sitting better. So make a 90 degree angle just slightly above where your wraps are. And then make that full circle with your pliers. You can see this is going to be facing in the opposite direction. And this is also where you then want to think if you're making it into a chain, of course you want to also start linking them together. So I already have a previous link that I made. And I want to then link this before I finish off this wrap loop. So I'm going to imagine that they're sitting together. And then I need to bring this length of wire through that loop before I close it up. 
So you can see they're going to be sitting like that and this is why I like them being opposite. So you can directly link them together and they're going to be flat next to each other. And then we just want to grab our tweezer nose again, grab onto the circle and do your wraps below it just to finish off this link. Cut off the excess. And if you have enough left, you can obviously continue using this 0.8 mil for other links. Don't forget, we just need to tighten down that end of the wire. Just make sure you can't feel it with your fingers. But there we then have our complete link. And I've also connected them. And this is how we're going to then be building our chain. And these will make really cute bracelets, necklaces, or anything else you can think of. Now, of course, you don't have to make a chain of this. You can also use the links individually for, say, something like earrings. And you could then easily use a head pin instead of the 0.8 mil wire. That way you won't have a loop on one end. And regardless whether you want to make a chain or use the links individually. The fact that the double sided is perfect so it doesn't matter if they flip around so the piece basically doesn't have a front or back. Now if you like making your own chain I have lots of different designs I've done in the past. In fact I have a whole playlist full of tutorials with different chain designs. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below and don't forget you can also like share and subscribe and if you want to support me to make more of these tutorials there is a super thanks button below the video. Otherwise I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.